I'm the host, and we're recording this. Okay, give me one second. I'm hanging up. Hello, how are you? Can you hear me? Got to join connected to audio. Can you hear me? You're on mute. Oh, hold on. I'll unmute you. Because I'm okay. You're unmuted. Okay, cool. Oh, hey, how are you doing? Good. How's it going? What's popping? <laughs> hey, hey. So we're currently recording. Okay. We'll cool. edit it, of course, before we post it to Facebook. Okay. But I was just like, it's doing the most because we just we need to step off Facebook for a little bit. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so we do have one person in the waiting room. Whenever we're ready, we'll let them in. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. Um, so do you see, are you using Zoom from the web or are you using the desktop application? I think it's the de desktop application. Okay, so at the bottom of the screen, do you see share screen? Uh, yes, it's in green. Yes, and so click share screen. Okay. And you click it. Oh, okay, so then I can share. Okay, so Safari. So Go ahead and try it out. Okay. Okay, so let okay, me. Okay, so now your screen is big. And okay, there, that's perfect. So you get how to do it? Okay, okay. Okay, so now at the top and uh, the top center has in green, you are sharing, your screen sharing, and then in, next to it in red, it says stop share. That is correct. Okay, cool, cool. So and what you, I- You might want to close all your other tabs if you possibly can. Actually, okay, let me just- Because um, you know this is public. <laughs> yes, so let me- Yeah. Let me one second here. Let me just minimize this. Oops. Okay, so let me. You can go ahead and stop sharing if you want to for now. Okay, all right. You, yeah, but you get how it works. Yes, okay, so I, there, there's this option at the bottom. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, so that good. how do you want this to go? Like what's what's your... Um, I think, you know, well, Garble, I guess she can sort of start off with like an introduction and, you know, sort of introducing, you know, um, herself, the gallery, and then it'll eventually segue into me kind of going through some of the work. And I'm, I'm almost thinking of, um, I know that the latter end was set for like Q&A, um, oh. but I think there might be a few more questions than normal. Um, so I, I that's why um, that's why I told people to come like when they enter the room everybody's going to be muted okay so you'll have an opportunity to um, hold on we'll let my mom in okay uh -uh. one moment one quick second yeah hey mommy one quick second Okay, so you gotta be like next door or somewhere. Can you hear me? Oh, let me unmute you. Okay. There might be an echo. Talk. Hello. Okay, it's not too bad. You tilt your camera down. Okay. And I just sent the uh, link to Roger. Okay. No, we're not doing. We're not doing it on Facebook. He set so it up. No, we're, we're not doing it on Facebook. We talk. Me and Larry talk. Like, what's the point of doing the RSVP? We've had all these people give us their email addresses and names. Zoom. Why did you tell him that? You no. told me. You told him yes. No, I didn't talk. Tell Roger yes. So I did. I. 
don't have him record this for Facebook because we're recording it on Zoom. That's why you pay for Zoom. And we'll edit this down. We're recording right now, but I'll edit this down when it starts talking and then we'll post it to um, Facebook. But right now, like everybody can go see the reception. Huh? Why not? Okay. No Facebook. We have one person in the waiting room right now. I'm going to let people in shortly. So when let did me change you, my name. What did you uh, unmute me? Um, you want me to mute you? Everybody yes. that comes into the room will be muted. Do you have a white piece of paper? Yes. You have your white paper? I have what? What do I need white paper for? A piece of blank white paper. Okay, I'll go get one. That's how we're going to do questions and answers. Like, I'm going to be the moderator so I can mute and unmute people. But you have to hold up the white paper if you want to talk. See, that's going to Why can't you go in the chat room down at the bottom? They could if they wanted to, but it just allows people to talk on camera without a lot of interference. They can ask their questions on the side. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, and then you can unmute, or you can give them, you can unmute, you can personally unmute them. Right. Yeah, okay. so why don't you do that? That's why they have the white paper. If they put a note in the chat room, got a question. Yeah, and I'll be, I'll be monitoring that as well. Okay. So you see how it works? I guess. So how, how what's the order here? You're going to welcome everyone? Yes. And then introduce you as the moderator and then uh, wait. I'm here. You're here. I'm here. I'm in the bookstore, Wade's in the gallery. Okay. Let's see, I'm gonna add a, okay. Where are the so, people? There are two people in the waiting room right now. I will put, everybody should have gotten their um, invites via email. I'll put a notice on. So are y'all ready to let people in? Yes. It's 201. We gotta be on time. Okay. There are three people in the waiting room. I'm gonna let people in right now, okay? Okay. okay. And I'll unmute everybody, but when we start talking, I'll mute them. Okay. All right. And you go oh, I'll do it one by one. This is Judy Cooper. Okay. Hi, Hi Judy. Hi. Hello. Thanks for being here this afternoon. All right. We'll admit everybody. Okay. Hello, thank you for being here. Hello, Judy. Hello, Lisa. Yep, you got a Lisa that I'd signed Hello. up. Hello, how are you? Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you for joining in. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yes, yes. Hi, Lisa. How are you? How are you doing? I haven't seen you in moons in forever. So nice to meet up this way. <laughs> I've seen more people this way. <laughs> I know. Hi, Anita. Hi, Yolanda. Hey, Garbo. How are you? Good to Hello. see you. Hello, Anita. How are you? It's Wade. Hi, Wade. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. <laughs> the great body of work you have. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. It's 2.03. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
So I'll put the notice out there. You want to go ahead and get started? Two minutes. We'll get everybody to 206. Okay. Well, I'm putting the notice out there. We're assuming they're getting their coffee or <laughs> water. That's what I'll say. So just I'll go outside the room and see if there's anybody out here who needs to get in. <laughs> Okay, all right. So everybody, welcome to the art talk for passages, spaces, streets, and land, oil paintings by Wade Hansen. Um, I'm going to be your moderator today. Um, we probably will have more people join us along the way. So um, everybody, if you're participating, make sure you have um, you know access to the chat room. Um, at the bottom of the screen, you should see um, options for chat if you click your mouse over the bottom. So that's where you could ask questions. Talking, um, while Wade is presenting, I will have everybody muted. Um, and then for um, questions and answers, we'll kind of go with the white paper system using the chat room for uh, unmuting people. So uh, we'll go ahead and introduce the Director of Fern Fine Art, uh, Ms. Garbo Fern. Hello, everybody. So glad that you're joining us this, this afternoon. Obviously, we are continuing with the format of having our artist reception and our artist talk the following Saturday. So we're trying to be the new normal in this sense. So um, Wade Hampton has been with the gallery for some 25 odd years. And this is the fifth ex solo exhibition for the gallery and we're really excited to have him back in this period of time being from Arkansas, um, being here to help us go into the new normal and thank you Wade for um, all of your assistance in making this happen and you know virtually we're pretty much doing everything so tell your friends about this exhibit it's on our website hernfineart.com and you know Wade is from Arkansas, Marlton, Arkansas, as I said, but he's based in Las Vegas and California, LA. And I say this so many times that uh, Wade Hampton is not an artist who happens to be a dancer. Wade Hampton is an artist. Wade Hampton is a dancer and he is very creative and he has shared all his creativity with us and we're just happy to continue to work with you. So. Wade, take it away. Okay, thank you, Garbo. Uh, thank you very much for everyone, Garbo, Anna, the whole staff, and extended assistance uh, with Hearn Fine Art. Um, obviously, this time is, you know, no one a year ago, six months ago, none of us could have imagined what would be taking place right now. It would have been the weirdest movie that would have came out. But um, we are, we're here. Um, thankfully, we're, we're all living, we're all surviving. Uh, we're carrying on, and I'm very, um, every day, every moment, I'm um, just, I shake my head that um, this exhibition, this is being able to take place with what's going on. But, uh, so as we continue, as we segue into uh, the exhibition, uh, this is titled Passages, Faces, Street, and Land. And, you know, why the title? You know, why the subtitle? Um, Passages is a subjective look at um, things that pass, uh, things of, of journey. I see, I don't see things ending. I see things as journeys. I see things as passages. Um, there are chapters, there are books, um, there are passages, there are, there, are, there are whispers, there are things that when you say something, it can come back to you. So it, it'll, at some point, it may circle and come back to you. So these are these moments where we create these moments. Um, I see myself, <laughs> obviously, everyone's seeing this, this artwork, the visual artwork. As, as uh, Director Garbo mentioned, um, uh, my affiliation with in dance, you're seeing those, those, those things on the surface, but I don't see myself as a dancer. I don't see myself as a painter, as an artist. You know? So you're thinking like, why are we here? What are you talking about? But I see myself as a narrator. 
um, that I document my journey. And once again, it goes back to the journey, the evolution. It's, it's not, you don't wanna, I don't, I don't see myself as you know, getting better or worse, it's, it's, it's evolving. But these are passages that I hope to record, hope to document, hope to narrate in, in my own specific voice. So, and then the faces, street and land, that is more of the objective look. You know, you literally have a face on the wall, you know, a face frame, you have a figure, you have a street, you also have a few objects, um, a few still life pieces, um, some interior scenes as well as exterior, and you also have um, land, faces, street and land. So um, for those of you that have been able to make it to the gallery, or for those of you that um, were part of the, the live reception on Facebook, um, which is actually on our pages. So at any moment um, after this artist talk, you're more than welcome to view the reception in its entirety, and you're more than welcome to share it. Um, that goes into somewhat of an idea, somewhat of a briefing of some of the pieces. It highlights a few other pieces. But uh, so that's where the, the face passages, faces, street, and land. So that gives you somewhat of an idea of the, uh, the title and how it connects to these pieces. And so, I think I'm gonna go ahead and um, see, I see a few of you. Okay, there's awesome for me to, man of many hats, man of a few hats. <laughs> I, I will say that um, it is, and Garbo had, had, had highlighted this earlier, um, it is visual art and it is dance performance. I'm, I'm not a dancing visual artist. I don't, I don't sing. I don't, uh, I don't design fashion. I've been asked all these questions. So I'm, I'm not it's specifically visual art and dance. I don't want to confuse myself and throw myself into, you know, my mind exploding, but it's those two. So um, let's see. So we're gonna, I guess I'll go ahead and segue into, oh, from Anita, does your dance influence your art? And yes, it, it does. They both go in tandem, meaning that um, for those of you that have any experience, if for those of you that are artists or have taken a class, um, if you are dance or visual art, that instructor, at least in my experience, um, at least for dance, the, 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 the instructor says, move from your center, move from your center right here. You know, you don't, you, know, you don't move with your legs, you just happen to have these legs, you know, be thankful that you have, them, but you, you move from here. So um, in, in, in visual art, when I'm in painting, actually, way behind me, that, that huge landscape, that, not landscape, but that huge self-portrait, the uh, life-size piece, um, that's seven and a half by five and a half feet. And that's where I literally had to stand up and move. That was a physically demanding piece, but it wasn't technically a dance per se, but it was movement. But I was dancing in the sense that I have to move from my center and work with my whole body as opposed to just working with my, my hands or my fingers or a small portion. Um, so there, there is a dance that you play. There is an engagement um, that you play with the piece. Whether actually, whether it's small, um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and go into a screen share. Um, I'll be some of my questions, you know, answering some of the questions and my thoughts. I may be so going back and forth, but for all of you that are with us right now, I'm going to go ahead and tap screen share, and I'm going to go ahead and it's going to take us to the Hearn Fine Art Current Exhibition page. Okay, let me, let me see. Let me put this to the bottom. So, um, actually, let me, uh, oops, okay. One moment. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. And so right now, so we're at the, the current exhibition page on the Hearn Fine Art website, Passages, Faces, Street, and Land. And I quickly wanted to go to this uh, this page, I'm going to slowly scroll um, up and down. I've got the, the chat box open on, you know, on another screen, so I will check that momentarily. But I was starting to delve into with Anita's question as to do I, do I dance when I, when I paint, when I'm working on a piece of art? And I would say yes. Um, it's not my intention, but my focus is to, to not think, you know, not I mean not think, not to overthink, but to be in the moment and to uh, record, to narrate, to create a story. And I'm scrolling down because I want to find a piece that I, would, I wanted to highlight with uh, Anita's question here. 
Uh, it should be, where is he? Uh, it is, okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to click on it. That is, let me see. This is George Lewis Stewart, ladies and gentlemen. He's my great grandfather. And if he were living today, <laughs> he would be in his 140s. <laughs> so um, I mentioned this piece because um, with Anita's question, um, do I dance when I, when I paint? Um, there, there is movement. I don't want to say I'm, you know, once again, I'm not saying that I'm a, a dancing painter. It, it sounds, it sounds goofy to me, but, but I do move. I do move back and forth um, with, with the large piece, with the large um, life-size portrait. Let me scroll back to that one. Um, let me see here, scroll a little quickly. So if this piece right here, uh, this is titled A Game of Chess. This is once again seven and a half by five and a half feet. And then we're going to go quickly back to the uh, George Lewis Stewart, which is two and a half inches by two and a half inches. The actual artwork framed in this gaudy frame, it's eight and a half, eight and a half, but the actual artwork, the ballpoint pen on paper, it's two and a half inches by two and a half inches. So that is smaller than most people's fingers, the length of the fingers. So you know, why it's such a small size, can you say dance? Because even with this piece, as small as it is, it involves me, the, the narrator, to move in and to conversate and to whisper, but also to step back 20 feet and see that the piece is coming together. So even though I'm visually, when you see these pieces in person and you'll look left, you'll see the George Lewis Stewart, you'll look right, you'll see the game of chess piece, Based two and a half inches as opposed to seven and a half feet, um, there is there is a dance with them. There is a narration. There is a movement. Um, so, but these, yeah, these I, I'm pointing out these two pieces because of contrasting size. Um, you're going from this miniature piece to the life size, uh, the life size grand scale of uh, a game of chess. And so, let me. I'm gonna click back, I'm um, clicking on the detail and I'm gonna zoom in as much as I can on this, uh, this device so that some of you can get a closer look. Some of you that have not been able to make it to the gallery as of yet. Um, by the way, for those of you that are able, feel free to contact Garbo Hearn, contact the gallery and set up your appointments. Uh, appointments are available, visitation is available, but, but hourly and by appointment. Uh, once again, we respect, we're respecting what's currently happening at this moment within our society. And so we allow 45 minute intervals, a 15 minute break for a wash, clean, and the next guest to come in. So, but yeah, going back to this uh, game of chess. So I'm going to, let me see here. Let me go back to the chat and see if there are any, okay. Okay, very fluid. Um, Yes, the, uh, let me see. Yes, your brush strokes do have a dancing energy. Interesting approach. Um, I would say, I'm gonna click, um, and feel free to chime in with any questions or comments. I'll be switching back and forth and um, checking on the questions. Um, but yes, I would say there is a definite movement with the, uh, with the brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and let me go back to the top here. Uh, this, actually I'll go ahead and um, I'll click on this piece right here. This is titled Afternoon Diamond. And let me move the, uh, this box out of the way here. And I'm going to zoom in here. And this is actually, this is, um, we're actually looking, you're looking, you're facing north. The viewer's facing north towards the La Madre Mountains and the Red Rock mountains, the Red Rocks. This is Red Rock National Park, this whole area. And this was captured on a breezy, sunny, several afternoons actually, several. Um, and um, sort of highlighting to what Anita mentioned, the movement of the brush strokes. Some of my influences, they are from the Impressionist movement. Um, uh, just to go off the, the top four, I'm not gonna go into detail on everyone, but the top four, the core, um, uh, painters, and let me, while I'm speaking on that, while I'm highlighting that, let me go back to 
there's a painting I want to get to titled uh, The Books. And at first glance, it, it's, it'll probably roll over a lot of people's heads. Like that's just a painting of books. It's a painting, it's not real. It's not, it's not the actual books, but they're paintings of books on the floor. So it's not in a sense moving, you know, but this is a very important piece. Um, and so what it is within this story, you have uh, this book by Diego Velasquez. You have this book by Rembrandt here and it curls up to the top right. That is um, a book that's flipped open. That's one of uh, John Singer Sargent's paintings. That's his book, one of his books, one of his many books. And this small little booklet is a uh, book on Edgar Degas' dancers. Um, and this piece at the top, that was a painting that I was working on as I was flipping through the books, studying, painting, you know, studying their colors, studying their palette, studying their drawing ability. Um, and then I had these books on the floor. It was, I was just taking a break. And then, so I was like, I want to capture that, you know, as I even passed that by when I was actually painting on this piece, but it's like, wow, this is actually, this has some importance to it. So this piece, whether you're seeing this within the screen share, uh, whether you're seeing it physically in person uh, here at the gallery, um, this basically gives reason as to why, let me go back, click back to the, um, a scroll to these, to these various pieces. This gives reason as to why you're seeing these, this artwork, these images um, applied, uh, showcased in this manner. Um, I'm gonna quickly click on this piece. Um, and even the brush stroke is very loose. This is uh, the Golden Gate Bridge. And this was, um, the reason why this happened when it did, not that it would, it would not have happened eventually, but the reason why is I was at, um, I was invited to San Francisco for a dance studio's uh, anniversary. Uh, S F Mambo, S is in Sam, F is in Frank Mambo, M-A-M-B-O. It is a form of Latin dance. It is more widely known as salsa, but the correct terminology would be Mambo. So um, it is very big, it's a culture, it's, it's it's, it's a huge culture that, that, you know, not to go far back in history, but from the Africas to the islands to New York, and it spawned from there on out. So, um, but I was um, invited to San Francisco to uh, celebrate with several dance performances for a dance studio over the weekend. And I had a moment to get to the Marin Highlands area and paint this area of the, uh, the Golden Bridge in San Francisco. But you're seeing the movement of the brush. This was, this piece is actually, this is one of several other pieces which are actually on my YouTube channel, uh, which is, when you have a moment, you can go to Wade, you can go to YouTube and then search Wade75, W-A-D-E-S-E-V-E-N, the number five, and you'll see this video uh, from beginning to end, from blank board to finished piece. So, um, and as much as I, as I want to, as much as I, I can, like, as I mentioned earlier, I feel that I'm a narrator, I, I document. So I want to um, narrate, I want to capture myself narrating. So in this case, it's, you know, the camera, the setup, the staging setup, and then there's the subject, which is the painting, which is myself. And then you have the actual painting, which is the main star. And then you have, uh, I guess you would say, the two main stars are the actual environment that I'm painting, the natural painting that's happening itself. Um, but yeah, so if you, for those of you that are familiar with some of the painters that I've mentioned, and then there are a number of other landscape artists, a number of figurative artists that I could go on for hours on end, but we don't have that, that time right now. So I'm going to click out of that. Let me just, Swipe back over and see if there. Um, let me see. Okay, this photo from Kenya. The more I look at this piece, the more I love it. So I'm guessing. Let me see. If that was what time frame? That may have been the uh, the Golden Gate or possibly the um, the game of chess. But I'm going to uh, let me go on to the next piece here. I'm sort of randomly going through each piece in and out. But once again, feel free to chime in with any questions or comments. Um, this piece is 
I guess optically, this, this kind of stands out. It, it feels a little bit different than all the other pieces. You know, um, it's a huge part of my life. Uh, I have worked in galleries, art galleries. Um, I've worked, you know, in the back storage area, in the front area, in and around the main desk area. But I've, I've also worked in warehouses and um, I continue to do so. And so I'm very aware of the, let me see if I can zoom in on this right here. And hopefully we can try and get some of the, there we go, there's some, some grainage. You're actually seeing the, the wood showing through. If you follow my arrow on the screen, you're seeing the, the wood, I call it the ground, um, the ground, the surface of the actual board. You're seeing that show through. Um, so this is, obviously it's a forklift, you know, but this is a, a quiet moment in the busy warehouse where for those of you that may have had a glimpse of may have worked in the warehouse, you're aware of how noisy and how crazy and how dangerous um, this, this, this area, this warehouse can be. So I have been trained, I have been certified, and I do have my certificates to, to operate this, you know, these, uh, this vehicle, this, this machine, this piece of machinery. Um, but I thought it was fascinating. I thought there was a certain beauty about the, that orange. You know, I'm, I'm attracted to colors that appear to be in their pure form, not that any color is pure, but I'm attracted to colors, to surfaces, you know, the, the iron, the steel of the forklift, the grains of the wood, the, I like um, light as it casts in from the right side and it emits, it creates this whole world within an environment. In this case, we're inside, this is a quiet moment. This is the, the downtime, it's the quiet before and after the storm, so. Um, but this is titled distribution and export. Uh, distribution meaning that as, you know, this is the back end of so many businesses where things are in galleries, museums, you know, galleries have warehouses, museums have huge warehouses, uh, grocery stores, retail stores, they have warehouse. Where are we gonna store this stuff? Where are we gonna put this stuff? You, everyone has a warehouse. It's your closet with clothes and shoes and everything. So, <laughs> so you constantly distribute and ex export and you move things in and out. Um, but that was, there's actually no other piece in the current exhibition that's kind of giving this, this story, this narration. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So now I'm going to, if I can, oops, sorry about that. Let me zoom out and let me click back over to the scrolling. Okay, we're at the bottom now. Uh, let me flash back over to if any, any more questions. Um, do you ever, this is from Anita as well, do you ever include a suggestion of your shadow in your work? Um, it depends on the, uh, the light. The only, let me see, there is, let me go back to, the only piece um, that I think of at the moment, let me scroll back up to, I'm gonna quickly scroll. Um, the, there is me, once again, going back to a game of chess, uh, this is in my studio. Uh, you can see this, this object here on the lower left is a tripod. Let me zoom in as much as I can here. And there is my shadow there. That's where I'm looking into the mirror. This is for those of you that, are, that have drawn or painted yourself in any comical or serious manner. Um, whatever you're wearing, you know, I mean, in this case, I'm wearing um, this, this huge hat blazer tie. I have to put this, take this on and off every time when I go back to a sitting of this piece. But there you can see the shadow because I'm literally the subject within the piece. So um, there is my shadow from the light casting. Let me zoom back out here. From the light casting from the, this would be, it's out of view for the viewer, but the light is casting from up from the upper left and it's coming down to the lower mid right on this, the side area. So that's where my shadow is included. Um, with other pieces, let me click back out. Let me scroll down. Um, the Afternoon Diamond. With a lot of my pieces, I like to be a lot of the work, a lot of, I mean, not a, a good amount of things that I do, whether if it's, if it's, it's artwork, whether if it's, you know, minor photography, whether if it's posting something on social media, um, you'll probably come across a, a number of content where Where's Wade? Why isn't he in there? I, I, at times I don't like to be, you know, right now we're doing this, this Zoom call, which is very great. So I, I'm, I'm readily available to be the, the center of attention, so to speak. 
but there are other times when I like to lay in the cut. So this is where I don't want myself at all in this view. <laughs> I only want to, I, when I see it, I don't want to think about myself. You know, I don't want to think about, oh, well, that's my shadow. I want to see, yeah, I want to see the vantage point of the La Madre Mountains. Um, if you follow my arrow here, I'm pointing at this mountain here. This is called Turtlehead Peak. So I've actually hiked this mountain. It's not much of a climb, but it's, it's, it's a very, it's a hike that would take the average person maybe two to three hours. But I did it in about an hour and a half, you know, call me crazy, but it is what it is. But I, well, a good thing about this piece and all my, all my work is that I like the sense of depth and a sense of vantage points, meaning that as the person, um, as a viewer or as the artist, um, you're actually about 10 feet from this rock on the lower right. And then I like to sort of envision the vantage points of from this rock miles away in the distance to Turtlehead Peak right here. So I've, I've literally stood on that mountain. It's unbelievably windy. Um, I was there for no more than half an hour because it's, it's, it's extremely windy, like 40 to 60 mile per hour winds. But I was able to see so much of the Southwest. I, I was able to see um, uh, as far Northeast to where they used to do the atomic testing. Um, everything, everything you can, it's unbelievable. But I like vantage points from distance too close up. So um, in this case, that, that whole sense of depth, obviously this, this depicts several miles. And then if you go back to, let me scroll down to some other pieces here. Uh, let me go to actually this profile. This is uh, Celine. Let me click on this, this one. Uh, so Celine is a, I was actually, I was just texting her a few days ago. Um, she's not on Facebook anymore, <laughs> but she's on Instagram. So I was inviting her to the uh, Facebook live reception, but uh, pointing out this painting that, you know, even though this is a profile, it's a close up of a human, um, I, I share the same respect and a sense of depth. Um, I like to, I feel that it's a challenge if I can have the viewer feel like this ear is, as, is very close to you and this nose is as far back as a face would be. I like to capture that sense of depth from ear to nose, you know, or from you know, from the shoulder, you know, in most cases, we know that the shoulder is much closer. Um, I like that, that feeling here, you know, and I like the feeling that, you know, there's atmosphere that's starting to create. And even from this, her jawline to the middle of her cheek, there's a sense of depth that it sinks in, you know, those, those subtle nuances of, of actually sculpting and molding the, uh, the, the, the artwork together is uh, something that I'm very um, uh, passionate about. Um, it probably gives reason to, um, when we were in school, um, we actually took um, sculpting classes. Uh, so there are a few more, um, well, that's from Kenya, that's the piece I was talking about that may have been the, uh, the Afternoon Diamond, the Landscape. Um, this is from Anita, appreciating the subject matter, uh, the blended transition of the earth and sky. Uh, oh my gosh, transitions, Anita. <laughs> you know, that, that, old, that old cliche, you know, life is about transitions. It go, this goes back to dance. And let me go ahead and we're going to some portraits, transitions. Um, let me go to, this has, um, I'll quickly go into Paola, a uh, very cool friend of mine. She's from uh, Colombia. Uh, I think she's from Bogota. Uh, but Transitions meaning that, let me see, let me zoom in here, um, her hair, you know, the, the sense of atmosphere, the transitions. The transitions is that like within dance, for example, you never stop moving. You may slow down, but you never, you never stop moving. You, you, once again, as I mentioned uh, with a question earlier, do you, um, I think it was Anita, do you dance when you paint? Um, dance, you know, you, you, you move when, you, when you're painting but you never stop moving. There is a sense of the eye has to, um, has to follow. In this case, the viewer may start with her eyes and you may go to the nose or you may go down to the, uh, the cheek and the jawline, um, but transitions meaning that how things roll. Um, it's, it's as like within video, within film and video production, there has to be constant movement. Within this transition, if you were to see this, this piece in life, uh, here at the gallery, you would get an idea of the transition of her hair, her dark brown hair to shadow areas within her hair to where it just bleeds off and form one value 
of the background, that transition, those transitions, uh, transitions meaning, um, I know it was with uh, John C. Sargent, I mentioned him earlier, but one of his teachers, one of his core teachers, Carlos, Carlos Duran, C-A-R-O-L-U-S dash D-U-R-A-N, Carlos Duran. Um, this is one of his main teachers. He highlighted uh, um, not lines, but shapes and values. So um, it is, in one sense, you can draw a contour of this face and you'll see the line, but I try my best not to think of lines, but I think of, think of shapes and values. That way it creates this unbelievable, let me see the photo, it's kind of, see if I can zoom in here, this transition. Uh, whether it's, it's more sharp, you can still see it's treated in a manner where you see the, the cools, the cool cools and the warm cools. Um, and then right here, the transitions of her cheek. Um, right here where she's giving this, this subtle, uh, not as quite a smile, but like right there, it's a subtle transition. Um, right here, it's, it's stark. It's not sharp like a cutout, but you can see from the shadow to the warm right above her lips, you can see that transition. So uh, this transition from, this is like just one brush stroke. This is like a big swipe, like, you know, so from her hair um, to the side of her face, you know, uh, transitions, transitions, what's there and what's not there. Um, that earring, that's just, those are just highlights, but to give that illusion of transition, you know, from that's, that's literally just the highlight of the earring. And that's just, that's literally just, if you see it in person, that's just paint. That's just air. That, that, there's no ring right there, but it's just, you know, the transition of, you know, making an illusion, you know, of the, to create the, that transition. So I'm going to pan back out. And I'm gonna to go to, let me click back to a few other pieces. Let me tap over. Um, uh, let me see, let me see. I love the light on Celine. I noticed that hair to the environment. Uh, yes, the environment, meaning the background, uh, meaning the, you know, how is the viewer or the subject matter sitting? Um, so this was, let me click on to another still life here. This is titled The Bongos, and it's just what it is. It's just, it's just a pair of bongo drums, and this was given to, this is actually, let me click back out. This was a gift from, where is she? Where is Cajori? Cajori. This is from Cajori's boyfriend, Gonzalo. Um, this is, those bongos were from, from her boyfriend. Um, we, a lot of these, you know, a lot of the sitters, um, they, I know them either through the visual art community or through the dance community. Cajori and her boyfriend, Gonzalo, I know them within the dance community, that meaning, meaning specifically salsa community. Uh, so there are weekly, well, prior, prior to the current state, <laughs> you have weekly, monthly events. So um, as you go through these social gatherings, you, you see people and you eventually uh, break bread with them. Um, but so, yeah, even with, you know, oftentimes I like to come back and sort of, you know, look at these paintings and sort of, you know, my, my thought is like, you know, how can I evolve? How can I, you know, uh, evolve with the paint? How can I, you know, push stronger brush strokes and so forth? So I'm, I'm constantly critiquing <laughs> my work <laughs> as much as being viewed. So this, this beautiful exhibition here just allowed me to, <laughs> Hey, to say it, critique it even more, or to to evaluate and establish where where the where the stories are going next. But so Cajori's boyfriend um, had gifted me these uh, these bongo drums, and going back to that that word within was it, I think it was Anita's uh, comment uh, environment. Environment is is segues into an important word of surrounding of grounding. How is an item going to sit? Meaning, meaning, you know, if these bongo drums are not sitting on this board, you know, they may not st tell the story that I'm hoping to narrate and portray to the viewer. So the environment, um, these boards, this piece was actually, this is also on my YouTube channel. Um, it, it, it was at another exhibition uh, last summer. And um, what I thought was cool from the, the viewers coming in, um, those that were invited in, they were to come in and take a seat and they could, they could, you know, view the artwork that was on the wall, and, but they could also witness the artist setting up this still life and then uh, setting up the camera and then 
executing and painting the steel light. So I thought that was, it's like seeing, you know, seeing that, that, that cook, you know, seeing that, that mechanic work on the engine, seeing, seeing everything, you know, as opposed to seeing the finished product, you know, seeing it from beginning to end. So it's, it's like, you know, you, you become aware of someone and they're talking all this stuff. Okay. Like, let, okay, what is, you know, let, let's see what all this talking about. He's, he's talking a lot of, a lot of stuff. So let's see if he can back it up. So, um, and I, I, you know, for me, it wasn't, it was that, you know, painting in front of, uh, this didn't bother me at, at all because I used to, with my 18 by 24 drawing pad and with my easel, I used to draw live in Times Square during rush hour, down in the subway tunnels, down on the platforms. I literally used to paint in the rain in Madison Square Park at 20, 23rd Broadway and 5th. So painting in front of, you know, five feet away from people that are sitting down in a gallery, um, that didn't, you know, uh, that didn't bother me. It actually made me react more, you know. My thought was that, okay, how can I capture this in one stroke? <laughs> I still look at all these pieces, like how, how can you, how can I capture this in one stroke, you know? Obviously, it's, 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 not, it's not impossible, believe it. <laughs> As crazy as it sounds, it is not impossible, but you know, you can't physically take, you know, and how out it, it is, it's nearly impossible, but it's not, you know, technically it's not, but, but the idea is how to capture that in one stroke. Obviously there are many strokes, you know, I'm, st I'm still learning, I'm still a baby at this. I'm still learning how to paint. I'm still learning how to, to create these stories. So in this, in this representational manner, representational meaning that it's in a, realistic form, not photorealistic, but in a, it's in a realistic um, depiction. Uh, you might say some pieces are probably a little bit more linked more towards impressionism or impressionistic, um, but definitely of movement. Uh, so let me go to, let me see, let me just go back up to, oh, let me go to, um, well, this drawing. So let me, this is, for the most, most of the pieces in this exhibition um, are oils, oils on, on wood, on panel. Um, one piece, a large self-portrait on canvas. This uh, is ballpoint pen. It's your regular everyday nine to five big office pen and it's on paper. And this is uh, titled, appropriately titled Park Avenue. Uh, why does this guy keep talking about New York? But, oh, that, that's, 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 that's part of who I am and what I do, but, but uh, I can't help that. But the, this is literally, and this, is, this viewpoint is titled Park Avenue. This is in Moab, Utah. It's in Utah, it's in Moab, and it's within the Arches National Park. For those of you that have been here, um, you, and you've been to this park, uh, you've been to this viewpoint and others, the place is, is very surreal. Um, I invite, uh, when, it, when everyone is able, I invite all of you to uh, make plans to visit the Arches National Park in Moab, Utah. It's very surreal. Um, and it's well known for these, these natural uh, structures of, of rock, of ground, and they formed over thousands of years to where, here, let me zoom in here. This is real, this is like, this is not like, I'm not making this shape up. You know, these are like these structures that were, at one point, this was probably this huge mountain and then weather just gave way and it, these pieces broke off. And so you have it with like these plates, you know, um, these thin plates, um, but these are like hundreds of feet high. And so this is, to me, when I first saw this, this looks like a river. It looked like, you know, everything was sort of, the water was flowing this way. But my guess is that they titled it Park Avenue because it feels like you're walking either north or, north or south uh, on Park Avenue. Um, I, I didn't see a description as to why of the title. It just gave the title and it just gave some of the, the specs of the land, you know, the, the age and so forth. But this is um, cat with, with ballpoint pen. And well, how's, oh, this is, it's not that big. The actual piece, the actual artwork, the drawing is like eight by eight, nine by eight, nine by nine, roughly it's, it's square. And this is why the ballpoint pen is because it's very portable. Um, a lot of people, the appointments that were given over the weekend, the past weekend, a lot of people were asking, you know, why ballpoint pen? 
you know, it seems like such a challenge, but for me, it was very portable as a medium. Uh, with pencil, I had to think about the pencil, the eraser, the sharpener, or a knife, and how I'm going to sharpen a pencil. With a ballpoint pen, although it is not as forgiving, once you put pen down, you, you can't erase it, it's just a pen. So you just have to, you know, learn how to utilize the tool. But I like it because it's very portable, and at any moment you can strike down that heavy dark value and you can leave some light areas um, like, let me see, like in this part right here. So uh, let me pan back out. Let me, let me go back to the works. Let me scroll over and see uh, cityscapes versus, uh, versus nature. Um, as long as it has depth, um, the, for example, it would be really cool um, to, well, actually it was, it was really unbelievable to, to sketch. And none of these works are, which I mean that question actually, <laughs> it highlights next time, Garbo, I'll have to bring in some of the, uh, the drawings. It was the uh, series on Times Square. These were, they, they were Garbo, they were um, a series of continuous line drawings. And I focus on the, once again, it's, it's all about depth with me, it's all about depth, whether if it's this front lower corner of this book to that back area. Um, oh, there's a uh, text message. Let me get out of there. Okay. So um, uh, cityscapes or landscapes, gosh, uh, as long as it has depth, you know, as long as it has depth, as long as, gosh, I wish I had one of these drawings as an example, but, but for those of you that have been to Times Square, and I'm going to segue to the landscapes, but for those of you that have been to Times Square, and if you've taken the, the S train, it's a cross town, it's an east-west train, which goes, it takes you either from the Grand Central Station area to the Times Square area. But um, within that, you, there's this hallway, there's this long hallway, and it's, it's just, you know, you can stand at either end, and it feels like it's like two miles, when it's not that long, but it feels like it's two miles. So I remember standing there at one end, um, off near the center of the hallway, actually, and I was capturing that that whole space, that depth. Let me, one moment. Let me put this uh, these text messages on. Pardon me, one quick moment, ladies and gentlemen. We are experiencing. Uh, let me go to details and do not disturb us. Okay, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. So, okay, so there we go. Okay, so. Um, but as long as it has depth, uh, the, the hallway, the subway tunnel, um, it was probably like an eighth, maybe a sixteenth of a mile, but it, it seemed like two miles. But that sense of from the vantage point, from whether if it's, you know, here, I'm standing on this hill in San Francisco, and I'm actually about maybe 30 or 40 feet from the edge, I'm not that close to, I'm thinking about several miles over to the northern tip of San Francisco. Once again, the advantage points, like I've been here and I've been there. So it's, it's that relation. Um, so give me Times Square, uh, give me, you know, uh, I'll take my easel and, and paints and I'll set up on a, on a busy Saturday night and I'll paint, you know, from that, that triangle in Times Square looking down Broadway, or you can give me, you know, um, somewhere in Moab, Utah, or somewhere in Zion National Park. Um, or in this case, let's go over here, let's go to this one. This is Niagara Falls. Um, this, this piece was interesting. Um, so I'm not a fuss as, as, as I'm, I'm gonna get both. <laughs> Getting, I'm sorry, let me go back to this piece right here, but I'm gonna get both. But as long as there is a sense of depth, you know, as long as there is a sense of depth, whether, so it's either cityscape versus uh, nature. Um, and each has their, uh, the cityscape gives, for me, it gives me that life and that rush and that energy and the people and that pulse. And the landscape gives me downtime, you know. It's like, you know, the running in the city and resting in the landscape, you know. I, I need that, that yin and yang. So I'm not gonna live without both, you know, so. Um, but I do need depth, <laughs> so, so, um, so we're going to this piece, uh, Niagara Falls. This was 
um, this is also on my YouTube channel. Uh, this, along with several of the other paintings, the bongo drums, the bongos, title of the bongos, specifically title of the bongos. Um, the, there's another piece which is not part of this current exhibition, but for those of you that are able to make it to the gallery or if you have any further interest, you know, um, on any further questions on these pieces where Garbo or the staff may email you some more information. Um, another piece that was painted live was, it's titled uh, Life at Pyramid. And it's actually, it is in the, the Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing Bookstore. And it's a still life, which is also on the YouTube channel. And um, that's also, you can, that's documented from blank canvas to uh, finished piece. Um, so life, life at Pyramid, this piece, Niagara Falls, the bongos and the Golden Gate. All those pieces were documented live. Um, not able, it's, it's very challenging um, as a one man shop when you're going out on these ventures to paint. Um, uh, when when you, your, your ideas and, and your, your, your specifics, your things are so focused that it's almost like, it's almost best for certain things just to sort of go out there and maybe not worry about the physical assistance of this person and that person, but some of the projects call for, you know, you know, being out, you know, for one sitting seven, you know, four to seven hours painting. And so the other person is just standing there, you know, they have to stay there, they can't leave, they gotta stay there, they gotta watch the camera, you know, they, get, they gotta watch the equipment, they gotta wash the paints, they gotta check on, you know, they gotta check on the main, you know, the, the, the artist, so to speak, and see that everything's okay. So there are times where I would rather just, you know, do the one man shop, but, and document, um, set it up myself. But the challenge of documenting, the beauty is, is to capture, capture it from the outside in. Um, but the challenge is putting it all together. But getting into this piece, this is, it's, as you can see, it's Niagara Falls. It's, it's from the Canadian side, from Ontario. And that was painted on uh, July 4th, 2017. And we're, all of the immediate family, we were back, uh, most of us, we were back in New York, or that we were heading back to New York to celebrate my mother's birthday. I made it back up there a little bit earlier um, because the thought had popped into my mind. It's like, I gotta get up there. I had a lot of friends that would go to these salsa festivals in Montreal and Ontario and, and here and there. And, and so I was like, man, I need to get up there. I need to get that. So um, I did as much research as I could, um, but where I knew I wanted to be on the Canadian side because it had the vantage point of the two falls. And, but I didn't know where I was gonna set up. And which may seem very insignificant, it's a huge, Planning all of this is, is unbelievably huge. So um, I remember that weekend prior, um, I was up most of the weekend for performing and teaching workshops and dancing with friends at a salsa festival, and then not sleeping for a five hour, six hour flight to JFK, then taking uh, a one and a half hour train to Jersey City, then driving nine hours up to Canada. And um, it was to capture, to get up the next morning, travel an hour back to the border, near the border and capture this, paint for five or six hours, travel an hour back into Canada, sleep for four hours, and then drive nine hours back into Jersey City and then take a train, drop off the car, take a train <laughs> two hours back up to the Bronx and then I could actually rest. But for all, all that, there, there's so much within that, um, is these moments, you, you, can, you can choose to accept these moments at a later date, but the time, that, that time was then, so. Within that, for those of you that view this, this in its entirety, you're going to hear some very friendly conversations and you're going to hear some very candid conversations. Uh, so I was on guard. I, I was actually, I was in a zone, but it was actually, uh, some of the conversations in a situation was, was, I wish I could have captured the camera capturing me, kept, you know, as I'm capturing the painting, watching the surrounding and watching the people. So that would have been interesting, but it's like we are painting along Hollywood Boulevard or you're painting in Times Square, or in this case, um, Niagara Falls, the promenade area, is like one of those busy tourist areas. So you have hundreds of people walking by. By the end of the day, you have thousands of people that have walked along this area and that have stopped and that have bumped into you, that have bumped into your cameras, that have, you know, that have tried to start conversations with you, whether they're good or bad. But I think, you know, I wasn't gonna budge or move. You know, I was, I was not gonna move, so. 
this painting, this moment was, was, more, <laughs> was more than everything else um, during that, that time. So um, let me see here, where are we? Oh, we're getting close to, I've been yapping and talking. Any, any further questions, anyone? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click out of this screen share. That way you can see the actual gallery that I'm in. And, and let me see here. So let me put it back on full screen. Okay, so um, I will stand to the side. And the laptop camera is not the best of view, but this gives you a little sneak peek. Um, there is the, the game of chess. There is the Golden Gate Bridge. And there are a few other pieces, a series of uh, the portraits. Uh, those portraits, there were several of them. I wasn't able to highlight all of them, but uh, there was a series of eight uh, portraits. And it's an ongoing series titled Colors. And it focuses on the various colors of uh, uh, various nationalities. And the subject matter are females. But within that, it's these subtle nuances. Let me go back to a screen share uh, real quickly. Um, let me see here. Let me click back here. How quickly so. So you're seeing, okay, let me go back okay, from the top. Let me move this to the side. You're seeing Carla. You're seeing Caitlin. Carla from Salsa. Caitlin from the art community. Celine from Salsa. Erica, I would say from the art community, although I met her at a retail store opening. Kaori, as I mentioned, her boyfriend had given me the bongos. Karma, we actually met. I was sketching live in front of the Bellagio Hotel and she started taking pictures of me, so that's how we met. Uh, there's Paola, there's Sandra. We, Sandra and I actually met at a Cirque du Soleil uh, dance workshop. That's where we first met. So um, I did do some projects, a few things with Cirque du Soleil, not much, but uh, that's, that's in there. Uh, who else is? So that was a series of eight. Oh, um, so let me go back out of screen share. Uh, yeah, had someone on Facebook the other day had inquired about why, why she was seeing so many faces, so many uh, depictions of the female. Um, at that point, prior to that point, I was not painting a lot of female figures. Um, most of the figures in the drawing class, painting classes were male figures, some female. Um, but I knew that there was a point where I needed to, you know, work on the nuances, in this case of subject matter and personality. And the, the female has more nuance. It's more of a challenge for me to, to sculpt that and create that. Um, the male, you know, I, I, I can paint myself any day. I'm not, I'm not leaving myself. So that, wasn't, that was less of an issue at that moment. Uh, so that was at that time where I needed to, like, I need to paint. Uh, I'm meeting, meeting all these people. I need to paint her face. You know, I need to paint her face. So um, there are some things that I'm working on now where it's going to delve further back to the masculine. Uh, so. Um, let's see, where are we? We're at 256, Garbo. So, um. so what we can do is just, I mean, if anyone wants to ask a question. Yeah, I so I like I said, exaggerate on the, the cuteness of the eyes and the mouth and the cuteness on the hair. The, the hair of which piece? Yeah, so whereas when you look at it, you'd be like, oh, she's so sweet. But then you see that finger up in the air, you know she got some too. So you already got all the indicators there. So all of the indicators don't have to be the same indicator. You get me? Right. For which piece in particular? So, and I definitely want some straggly pin stroke in the hair to, to more be hair <laughs> like. Mm hmm so Let me go back to... Let me go back and to a big bow. Fluffy, frizzy. More like where you can like strands of hair, you know, right, right. some strands of hair. Okay, one moment, one moment. I think that she was talking to someone else. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I unmute everyone. So if anyone wants to anyone ask wants to ask a question, just definitely let me know. Okay. Yeah, feel free. We're open for questions. Have you always worked in oil? Um, what not always. What do you like about it? I'm sorry. Oh, um, I've worked in acrylic, 
Um, um, as, far, as far as the wet mediums, I've worked in acrylic, watercolor, um, and oils. Those are the, the primary. I've done some if you want to call it, spray painting as a wet medium. I've, uh, airbrushing, is, is, you can say, is a wet, goes from wet to dry. But um, as I would start to view more and more imagery, you know, I was very fascinated with, you know, I guess as, as an artist, as a storyteller, I like the fact that I can, within a two-dimensional plane, I can create a different world. And so when I started looking, in this case, these realistic worlds, so when I started looking at, at you know, whether it's black and white or colored images, I would get attracted to the color because that's what I'm, thankfully, I could see in color. And so I would see, you know, I always, you know, I always thought that like, you know, um, the, the human figure, um, it, is, it is the most challenging thing to, to paint. The hands are, within that, the hands are the most challenging, but I always thought, okay, that's very challenging. So I would look at these paintings of more and more figures and, and more and more of those paintings um, were, of, were, were, were done in oil paint. So I was like, okay, why? You know, so I, I started asking why, and then I just started seeing the results. The richness in color, the versatility of thick to thin, um, the, the allowance with mediums to, to speed up or slow down the drying time. Um, it was just very vibrant, very rich in, in, in its color, you know, um, so, if I haven't, I have not experimented with, uh, experiment with every medium, but of those few wet mediums, um, I end up landing uh, with primarily with oils. So that gives a little of a reason, you know, so. Um, and oils, for those of you that have painted, you, 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 in the studio, you know that oil smell. <laughs> People might think it's disgusting, but there's like that oil smell is like, you know. <laughs> so, but that's just a little, you know, but yeah, so it's, it's um, that's kind of gives you a glimpse why. So let me go out of the screen share. Okay. Actually, I'll keep this on here if, and I can, uh, any more questions? Any? Can. But when you're doing live pictures and you're using oil, it takes oil a little while to dry. It doesn't cause you any limitations when you're doing those live. No, the thing like, is you're, you're working wet on wet. Okay. You're working wet on wet. And so uh, that's just part of the challenge. Um, that's part of the, you know, what, you know, what you cannot expect when you're painting live. It's like when you go, you know, when, you, when you're performing at a concert, there might, there, there's, something's gonna happen, something unexpected is gonna happen, but it's a challenge of capturing and recording it. And, but, but work, you're working wet on wet, you know, whether it's see any of these pieces. Um, this piece, uh, the bongo drums, um, that was, you know, I had to be careful with all the pieces. Um, I had to be careful when I was finished painting and when I was wrapping up, putting it in the car, or taking it wherever, you know, it's, it's wet on wet, it's still wet. It'll be another week till it's dry. But it's, um, the thing with wet on wet, you know, at times you may want things to be dry, but you can also, although with dry, you can paint over something, but with wet, you can actually rub off the whole surface and paint again. Um, Whereas, let me scroll back up to a game of chess. This was very frustrating. Um, I was working in a very small studio and I had issues with the, and the lighting was not good. I had issues with the waist and trying to get that hip, that weight on that hip. So working wet on wet, it allowed me to um, paint this whole torso in and then erase it out like two or three times, you know? And that was, that was and the hat as well. Um, let me see if I can zoom in here. Um, you can't really see, probably not from the screen share, but you can see the reworkings. But wet on wet allows it, you know, and it's just part of, you know, if you're working from life, you need to be aware of the treatment of wet on wet as opposed to wet to dry. So, and uh, let me click back out of here. Questions, questions, they're welcome. <laughs> questions, comments? Question for you, question for you, wait. Yes. It's, it's Anita. Um, you choose your light sources direction or do you manipulate that? Do you use what's already at hand or do you, do you choose where you want the light to appear? appear? So you um, for, for, um, for, for, for indoor, for artificial lighting, for the again, of kids, um, that I can specifically dictate. Come on in, Ayana's here. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, with the lighting, I can, uh, Anita, I can specifically dictate for interior scenes. 
Um, I have a choice, obviously with the outdoor scenes. Um, here's an interior, uh, this is the theater. Um, I was already, you know, this, I, the light, I did not make it to lighting, you know, the lighting was already there. So that was, that was a big reason why I wanted to paint that area. This afternoon light, obviously I, you know, I'm <laughs> mere mortal, so I cannot control the outdoor light but I was attracted to the afternoon light. So my choice was to, if I can't control it, I want to choose when, you know, when, when, I, when I want to paint that light. So the daytime, I was there in the daytime. I didn't, like, I didn't like the way the light had came over. It actually created this, this very, very rich orange morning light, but I, I didn't like the, the, the way that, the, the atmosphere, the shape that it created. Um, so with outdoor scenes, I have to choose that time of day, you know, oh, I like this, I like this morning composition of light. I like this afternoon or midday. Uh, this piece up in the hills, um, it is, that is, that's the Hollywood Bowl right there. I like that, that midday light. Um, the midday light, the midday sort of uh, mid-afternoon that allowed me to capture as much of the color as I could with, within LA. Um, the morning light or the afternoon light would have given too much shadow. So I have to choose uh, the light for outdoor situations. So, um, any more questions? Questions are welcome. Okay. Questions, comments? Wait, another question. Yes. About your, um, I'm noticing there's a difference in, in the, your approach to the background in the portrait pieces. Yes. Is there a reason why you choose, um, choose to let in more light in some pictures, in, in some portraits, um, in comparison to others? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a reaction to um, the, the color of their face, their skin tone. Oh, okay. Um, it, it'll create a certain. I have this thing where where it's it's somewhat unconscious where I can feel and I can I can immediately see compliments. You know, I can see, you know compliment if it's not like, like the technical complementary, you know, uh, of the primary and secondary colors. I can see colors that would complement and work. So, and also it's it's a mood. It's a it's a shift of narration. Um, here with with Sandra, let me zoom in here. Um, she has a very strong sculpted face and I wanted to focus on that and take out less. The backgrounds are usually are pretty much just atmosphere. It's, 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 it's treated very thinly or it's an attempt to treat it very thinly. So the main figure pulls forward, but um, there, there is a choosing of when I see the, uh, the skin of a person's face, you know, I'm already like seeing the background, you know, you know, wherever it is. And so, um, I will set it up as best as possible to capture that. Um, the, I mean, the, the, the background, the treatment, this, this thin sort of gray, uh, for me, it, it works well with, with these, these sort of muted, sort of warm, cool, warm colors and these, the peachiness of her skin. Um, this, well, let me go back to, I think Paola had a good example. Uh, this dark background, um, what she was wearing, this it was like a burgundy dress and her skin tone and with the light also. In every room, the light, and even in rooms, as much as you can control it, the lighting is different. You know, so even in this gallery that has, has lit very well on the galleries last year, the, the lighting is always different. So I'm going to react differently to the, you know, how the background is treated. I may need to punch up the background or I may need to thin it out. But it, it's pretty much a reaction of, of the, the person's uh, I would say the color of their face, their skin tone. Um, so, and here you can see some of these treatments. Every treatment is differently. You know, it lends to, in this case with this series of, of eight, it lends to their, how I'm portraying part of their personality. Um, now this was, this piece of Erica was slightly, is a little bit more rendered. Uh, there was more of a focus to, um, it was a dark background, but it was more of a focus to, um, um, to give this, this area, uh, make this a darker value. And that's, that's just a, uh, that's just a better example of when you're seeing an image, anything, things have a light and dark. Things, things have a step in their role from dark to light, 
to, you know, to darks, to lights, to darks, to lights. You know, you need a light next to a dark in order for it to sculpt. But um, yeah, the backgrounds are treated primarily due to the, the color of their face and partially their personality, so. And, uh, questions, questions. Questions are more than welcome. You had said earlier that the hardest thing to do is the human draws a human figure. What do you most enjoy doing, and what are you? What series are you contemplating on doing next, or do you do things like that in terms of area? Um, well, I, I most, and if I can capture the the human, uh, the the human figure, and a because it's it's mostly what I relate to. Um, the if I can capture that, um, if I can sculpt the face, um, if if I can if I feel that um, uh, this face is sculpted, that it's rounded, um, that this neck has muscles in here, that really to capture that human figure is very satisfying to me. There are some, there's a piece that I've been thoughtfully researching at the moment, and um, it is I have not quite given a title. But everyone, <laughs> everyone on Earth is aware of the subject matter. I'm gonna leave it. I'll leave it at that. But it's a piece that I'm, 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 I'm in a lot of research, thoughtful research, to put this together. But this is one particular piece. It is a figure piece. Primarily, it is a portrait. But it's 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 taking a lot of more so to put the story together. Less of sculpting it and painting it. Um, that's gonna happen when I get into the piece and meet, meet the person. But more so of putting the. Uh, piece together. But yeah, getting back to the, for me, it's the human figure um, is challenging. And I've been, you know, my, for my teachers, but within the human figure, uh, the hands. Um, my teachers have mentioned how the hands are very challenging to, to paint. You almost don't want to correctly paint them in a way or think about correctly painting them, but you want to exemplify that gesture. And so this zoom in is not the best within this screen share. This is as far as I can zoom in on my screen but it gives an idea of the, the gesture and the, and the strength of the hands and which, hand, which finger is giving a little bit more focus as far as gripping. Um, so the um, not thinking, you know, but it's like, you know, just unconsciously it's like the hands are being showcased, you know, so I didn't want to do much more to what my arms and hands were going to do, but the, um, the hands uh, are, are very hands and feet within the figure, and then the figure is very challenging. So, um, so yes, to um, it is very challenging to capture the human figure, very much so. But it's thank you. This is just as rewarding. Any more questions are welcome. Questions There's a welcome. question from Roger. Do you use photos when you're in an environment with changing light to get the shading that you prefer? Uh, with changing light, so you just have to go back to, for example, Afternoon Diamond. Um, you just have to go back to that scene as much as possible. You, um, you'll, see, you'll see, for example, like the moment when I saw this light, um, I knew I wanted the, uh, the afternoon, there was some shadow I wanted the afternoon light, and then I came back a few days later, and then there was this shadow that was happening. And so I quickly, I didn't have enough time to finish that area, but I knew I wanted that. So it's just a matter of going back to that, that area and recording as much as you can or remembering as much as, much as you can. So um, you, you want to, you know, I mean, seeing, you know, the, you know, for, for those of you that have or, or thought about um, or are planning on, you know, viewing the, which I have not seen, but the Aurora Lights, the Northern Lights, seeing that in person, you know, could never be duplicated by any other, you know, device. So you want to see as much as possible as you can, you know. Um, you know, you'll find out from photograph to real life, things are not that dark. The shadows are not that dark. Um, you're, you're going to get the reaction of, some of these brush strokes would not have happened if I didn't know 
or if I wasn't drawing or painting these people, you know, so um, it gives it the brush strokes, the application gives a certain nature. But, but getting back to that, to that question, I'm, I'm always kind of going off tangent. Um, shadows, you know, you, you capture them as, you study as much as you can with, within training, within drawing and, and figure painting and with where light is coming from, you know, so, and then you, you, you become aware of the, the 12 o'clocks, the three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock, and you, you know, do your best to go from what you've studied, but, you know, it can't be stressed enough, you know, from life, if at all possible, from life, from life, from life, so. Um, so. And so even when, you, even when you get to a point where you're not in a situation to execute from life, you have that awareness. And from life meaning that it goes back to whether you have a painting from life or whether you have enough uh, study from life, the paintings are not, they don't appear flat. The moment is not flat. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel graphic. It's not quote unquote, like black and white. There, there is a range of grays and colors. Um, so, but yes, next question. If there are any questions. All the ones in the chat get addressed. I think so. Lee, did you see all the questions in the chat? Let me go back to the chat here. Okay, let me. Okay, so I'll get there a few more. Okay, that was. Let's see, I think we may have gone through Niagara Falls a little bit. Um, City Scrape First Nature. Um, yeah, Niagara Falls, once again, that is on my YouTube channel. That was, a, that was quite an adventure. I was zoned out. There was a lot of <laughs> interesting positive and negative things that happened, um, but I was in such a zone that it was, it was insane. Um, some feel like hidden story coming to light. Some looks like, this is from Anita, some looks to be finally free. Um, yeah, they're into like intimate moments, you know, um, hidden story coming to light. Um, I, I, I'm thinking of the, um, the forklift in the warehouse, like, you know, you're opening the, the, that gate and there's light coming in, uh, become being free is, is it could be the afternoon diamond to where you feel like you can freely run and flip in the, in the grass in those open fields. Um, the, the mood you capture in the eyes and the mouth, um, the eyes are, we, we've, Enough of, of us have heard that the eyes are the windows to the soul. Um, there is another piece which is not um, in this exhibition. It was, it was for some clients back west, and the the client was of a mother and son, and their pet, they recently passed a pet cockatiel. And so, but what, as in regards to the painting, the mother really, she was really elated with her sensual nature of her eyes and her mouth and that face. So as, as a portrait artist, as a representational portrait artist, um, if, if we are thinking about like, you know, the technical aspects, you know, those are things that we want to get correct. Those are things that we want. We want the, if, if you can get the, the actual sitter, the subject, the, the, the subject, the main subject of the piece, if, if their reaction is like, you know, is speechless, then you've accomplished what you've been meaning to do. So, um, so that, in a sense, that captures, she was very uh, elated with her eyes and her mouth because it says so much and it, it really leads off to the rest of the piece. Does the story develop while you are composing your, your painting, your painted story, or does a painting stem from a handwritten journal? Uh, some of them from, let me go back to the screen share. Uh, some of them, well, let me tap on a piece that we, touch on a piece that we haven't even talked about yet. Where are they? Where's the family? Oh, I haven't talked about the family, Garbo. We need to talk about those guys. Um, so this, and I will reference this with the, the large self-portrait game of chess. This involves um, a little bit more planning, meaning that it was, this is roughly at a you know, 30 by 40 size. And up to this point, I had not done a painting of this. This is not large, it's not large. I don't consider it large, but it was the largest I'd done with multiple figures. And, but I know these, I know these people. So I know all of them. So 
Um, so there was some sketching done to get familiar with the painting, but as far as like doing a huge amount of, of sketch work, um, having lived live with them, live around them, I, I know these people. So there's a certain amount you can take away. Um, there, there was, and actually the sketch, it was, it's this piece right here. It was just a, a quick little preparatory sketch. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll see things, I'll see moments um, immediately. I'll see like a light and a color and a composition, whether it's a building, whether it's a group of people, and it'll stay in my mind and I know I wanna come back and capture it. So um, I pretty much had the, the idea, it was immediately there as far as the finished piece. Um, this, this composition of, of the parents and their, their children, but I still had to go through and sketch. Um, uh, without sketch, I would say, well actually, let me see, this, oh, by the way, um, for those of you that may not be aware, this piece, the family, um, was entered and accepted into this year's Delta exhibition. Um, for those of you that are aware or not aware, the Delta is in, I think it's the 62nd, it's the 62nd year and it comprises of, um, it's basically a, a juried exhibition of those living or residing or those of, that have born within the Delta region of the United States. So um, current, obviously during the current state, um, the exhibition has been moved online. Um, it was planned, physically planned to be showcased at several buildings because the current main building, the art center is being um, redone. So, and that will be done in a few years. So, but um, yeah, that's a little side note. Um, so that took, this took a little bit of planning. Uh, some of the pieces where um, did the books didn't take that much planning because I've been flipping through those books, you know, several years prior to even painting those books. I was moving, I was stomping, walking, sleeping, dancing on this floor prior to that. Um, this piece of fabric, I, you know, it's like, you know these objects. So when you actually sit down to paint them or sketch them, it's, it's, it, it, it follows through. Uh, these, these shoes, the Cuban, the Cuban heels. Um, I eventually tore those up. Um, when I, you know, I set up the still life to paint them, it, that was in one sitting that came together. So that was, a, there are a lot of things where you're, you're actually, you're, you're living through the sketch, you are the sketch. You know the back of your hand so much to where once you actually sit down and, and paint, it's very natural. So it comes together. So let me go back to the chat. Um, let me see. Let me see here, let me scroll back up. Um, if there is, I think I may have somewhat touched on everything, whether there are questions or just comments. Um, uh, let me see here. Some of the pieces, um, this is from Kenya. Uh, the more she's referencing, the more I look at a piece, the more I love it. Um, for those of you that are, that are able to visit um, the Hearn Fine Art Gallery, um, and you're gonna, if you, when you come up on the game of chess, let, actually, let me go back to, okay, let me actually, oops, let's see here. Let me step, move to the side, if you can see my screen. That game of, the game of chess, a large piece in the background there. That piece, when you see that in person, uh, let me go back to the screen share once again. Um, I was, my intent was to, move this to the side, was to, um, when, I, when I have this subject, uh, uh, looking back at the viewer, my thought is I want the, the subject looking at the viewer. You know, if, if, if you, so in this case, you know, I, I knew I wanted to be looking at, I mean, me, it's myself, self-portrait, but I knew I, at it being a sitter, the sitter of the painting, I wanted the sitter to be looking back at the viewer. But when you see it actually in person, um, it takes on a much different meaning. The eye literally follows you. Um, it literally follows you wherever you go. It's pretty, pretty eerie, actually. So it actually, as large as it is, uh, the painting look, it, it feels like it's a, it's, it's a guy, it's a security guard guarding the show, the whole uh, gallery. So referencing the more I look at a piece, the more I love it. In this case, if you look at this piece more, you're gonna see that the eyes are following you and you, you establish this emotion. So um, I think that uh, I may have kind of gone through somewhat of the most of, if not all the questions or comments, uh, Garbo. 
Thank you all for being here this afternoon, spending part of your Saturday with us. You have had an opportunity to go inside of the artist's mind. He's shown you how he's captured his story and hopefully you can get excited enough to let him capture your story because he is available to do commissions of you, a place you've been or an object that's important to you so I have to do that commercial. And of course, the works in this exhibition are available for sale. So <laughs> if you can get into Arkansas to see it personally, because we are doing individual appointments, you can use our website. And as you know, we make art easy for you to acquire. So call me if you see something you like. Um, Let me, um, I guess before you finish, I just realized um, with, the, with the portraits, I want to quickly, I'm going to take my device and I'm going to pan towards the, the portrait wall, so to speak, or the oh. family wall. I, just, okay. I totally forgot about that. So, okay. um, and I, let me see. So it's probably as close. Let me see if I can get in closer for those of you. This whole segment, um, for those of you that are able to make it, this is, these are some projects. This is a book that I did. Um, I'll zoom in, getting closer. And this is, uh, the project is titled Stuart, The Stuart Miller Family. And this is of my grandmother's family. So these are some projects that I did a while ago. Uh, that is a portrait of my father. And that's a photograph of his parents. And that is an early depiction of my mother. Little, little infant. And that's her photograph of her family. But this highlights um, the continued collaboration that, that we have going on here with the portraits. So, but if you're able to see this in person, this, that drawing also takes on an unbelievable meaning. It's, it's a story. You know, these are not pretty, pretty paintings. There, there are layers, there are, there are chapters, there are stories, so. Thank you, Wade, for sharing and caring and making your creativity available to us all. Um, again, um, excited to to work with you and just excited for the whole opportunity to not let the COVID virus slow us down or shut us down. So we're keeping it real. We know that art is the basis of humanity and it's the one thing that you can always depend on. It doesn't change no matter what. A good artist is a good artist. So thank you all. And uh, Anna, do you have anything to say or share? I do not. We will be making a recording of the uh, talk available um, online. So if you want to share it with anyone, it will be available shortly. Thank you all. Thank have you. a good evening. Thank everyone for attending. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great weekend. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.